What is up guys, it's your boy Swallam here, back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, I have made 6,000 gold so far in profit in Season of Discovery, most of which has been in Phase 2. I'm actually closing in on 7,000, and I wasn't really that big of a gold maker in Phase 1, I was busy leveling alt and doing BFD. In Phase 2, I have been shifting gears a little bit, I still have two level 40s doing normal twice per reset, so we're doing some raids as well, but we have been making a lot of gold. In this video, I'll go through exactly what I'm doing to make gold, from start to finish, like how I started, how it's going now, and what I'm doing as well. The goal is for you guys to be able to pick up one or two things that you might incorporate into making gold, and if you are just um, starting out right now with let's just say 1 gold, 10 gold, whatever, this could help you out on your journey. Basically just me trying to teach you guys how I made my gold, and then hopefully you can pick up a thing or two. Now, if you want to have early access to any gold making video, as well well as even more gold making information. Check out my gold making guide through the link down below, I recently made a big update for phase 2. So this one used to be 134 pages, it is now 157. So 23 pages for phase 2, covering the best flips, the best craft, and just in general how I have made my gold in phase 2. In addition to that, like I just said, you get early access to videos like this one, any gold farming video, flipping video, you can take advantage of them before they go public. I think. The, the guide, for example, you're able to help me out a little bit financially, and I think I'll be able to help you out by making more gold in the game itself. It's a win-win scenario, and if that's interesti interesting to you, check it out. The link will be down below in the video description and also the pinned comment. And if you do decide to check it out, and you do decide to get the guide, thank you very much. It really means a lot to me. Now, with that being said, let's cover everything gold making in Phase 2. Now, to start out, you want to have some capital. Exactly how much you want to have really depends. The whole thing for me about gold making comes down to farming or making enough gold to then start using the gold you have to make more gold. So at the start I was farming a lot to get to like a couple thousand gold and then use that gold to multiply on itself and make more gold. I will say with some of the items that I'm crafting right now you can have 50 gold capital and almost guaranteed you can flip those 50 gold to at least 75 and then next time you can flip those 75 to 110 and you just basically get 50% profit every single time on a day by day basis. So if you start with 50 gold you're just a few days away away from being at 200 100 plus and then you suddenly start getting 100 gold per day in profit, right? And suddenly you're at 1,000 gold. Suddenly you start getting several hundred gold every single day in pure profit, just by crafting. Now when it comes to how to get that, I do have a couple of gold making videos, uh, gold farming videos. I would recommend if you have skinning, for example, do the Turtles in Tanaris. So Turtles in Tanaris is still really good. It has gone down a little bit in value, but literally just go to Tanaris and farm the turtles on the shore right here. So go all the way down to the pirates basically and then go back up. If you have fishing this one is even better because then you can find some floating wreckage, some firefin snapper pools and just fish up all the pools you can while hunting these turtles. Once again if you don't have skinning this farm is not worth it but if you have both skinning and fishing this farm is borderline unbeatable for you. On the other hand, if you don't have any professions, you can go to Dustwallow Marsh and farm the spider cave. White spider meat is still really really expensive, and you can also get some really good tra trash loot and vendor loot at this place, plus this chest spawns both inside and outside the cave. I do have dedicated videos on both those farms. Alternatively, if you don't want to farm gold at all, just do quest at level 40. A elite quest for example gives you about 3.5 to 4 gold, group quest as well gives you 3.5 to 4 gold, so just focus on high level quests, group quests, elite quests, dungeon quests, get those out of the way and you can easily get to at least 50 gold. If you, The more you get, like the more you get, the more you skip here. So by having 50 gold you can get 50% profit and get to 75 gold tomorrow, but if you have 100 gold and get 50% profit, you will have 150 gold tomorrow. So the more capital you start with, the more profits you will make. So if you want to start with 50, that's perfect. If you want to farm to 100, that's also perfect. If you want to farm to 1000, then start, that's also perfect. It just depends on where you are, how much gold you have, and where you want to start. 
but get out there and farm some gold, do some quests for gold, just get some capital. Now when you have some capital, this is when the fun begins. This is when you can start crafting a bunch of items, and going over to my TSM we can take a look at my most profitable item at the moment. You can see how much my gold has been skyrocketing since phase 2 came out. We started with about 200 gold, and then all the way to 2500. This is in pure, raw, like liquid gold, so as you can see it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up again and down again. I'm trying not to sit on too much gold, but I'm also trying to sit on not too little gold. I do like to make investments. So if we go over to my ledger for example, right now we have 1.7k gold in raw gold and 2000 gold in investment. I do like to invest most of my gold because that way they will go up in price and I will basically make gold for free. But going back to, back to my dashboard here, my most profitable item so far has been White Bandit Mask. I have sold 1317 White Bandit Masks for 1 gold each. Now most of that Mage Weave was bought in phase 1 as a phase 2 investment and really paid off, like I literally quintupled my investment there on a late phase 1 investment. I even made videos talking about this investment and it still worked out perfectly. I mean White Bandit Masks literally vendors for 43 silver so if you bought them for 25 in phase one there was no way to not make gold it was a guaranteed profit and the white bandit masks have been selling for a lot more than that and even now they're going up in price again so i could have just waited and sold them now and made even more gold but selling them early and then using that gold to make more gold i have been able to make even more but so far white bandit masks have been the most profitable they're still really good and it's worth crafting even now especially if you're either farming the mage weave yourself or if you're making like buying the bolts when they're cheap it's all about scanning the ocean house on a daily basis and finding them when they're cheap and then selling them when they're expensive now for expenses i have bought a sniper scope i bought five of them actually i only bought four but for some reason it's tracking as five i think i clicked one twice or something happened there i bought four of them i used one so i can now start making the scopes and make gold with the scopes and i i'm trying to sell the others for profit i bought them for 99 gold each and i've already sold one for 116 that's not a lot of profit it's 17 gold but it's 17 gold that i made in one day by flipping one recipe so i'm not too too mad about that i could have made more but i'm not too mad about it now while we're looking at my TSM here, we can see my total profit so far is 6,688 gold and the average profit per day is 90 gold. My top item has also been the rock scale cod. So I've been buying these at a vendor and literally selling them on the auction house and so far we have made over 3 times return on the investment here, so more than 300% profit on a literal vendor flip. Even now, after making that video public several days ago, it is still profitable, it keeps going up and down the market is volatile but it keeps going up and down so when it comes to me and making gold i like to not put all of my eggs into one basket so i'm making a lot of different things i am selling silver skeleton keys this is used in a phase one um, whaling supplies i'm still selling the cods as you can see we have about 700 cod on this bank character a lot of them on the ocean house some in the mail and some in the bag i'm selling magic resistance potions we're selling iron buckles copper short swords more iron buckles I'm focusing a lot on phase 1 content right now because what I've noticed is that phase 2, like phase 2 items, phase 2 materials, and crafted phase 2 whaled supply items, they have a lot of competition. A lot of people are posting them on the auction house and you can post something and get undercut in literal seconds. When it comes to phase 1 content, like phase 1 materials and phase 1 crafted items, I basically have the market to myself, so I can just post something for 8 hours and never be undercut, it's absolutely fantastic. So for me I've been having a lot of success reverting back to crafting phase 1 stuff instead of focusing all of my energy on phase 1 stuff. So for example, smoked bear meat, this one is used in a phase 1 whale aid supply and it's really profitable right now. Going to the auction house we can take a look at for example, I can just search up bear meat. 
As you can see, bear meat is going for 6.5 silver and smoked bear meat is costing 9.5 silver, so 3 silver profit for every single craft and the only thing you need to make a smoked bear meat is literally one bear meat, there's nothing like no vendor stuff, nothing extra, you just literally buy the bear meat and make them into smoked bear meat. So for me, I just send a bunch of bear meat to my cooking character and craft hundreds of smoked bear meat in one go and then go afk. I can literally craft for 15 minutes and go do something in real life and in that case I've made several gold like probably 10, 20, 30 gold by doing something in real life while being afk and crafting something in the game. As you can see we have sold 1700 smoked bear meat and we have bought um, well only on this character 791 bear meat for on under 5 silver each and we've been selling these for almost 8 silver each so we're almost doubling our gold every single time by making an item that sells a lot by the way, like the smoked, the smoked bear meat, they actually sell for quite a bit and they sell quite fast. Now we're also still making the turtle scale bracers, as you can see we have sold 215 turtle scale bracers for an average of 3 gold and 71 silver each. Even now I'm selling them for 2.5 and, and they cost me under 2 gold to make. Now that's not a lot of profit per bracer, I'm making about 60-70 silver right now for every single bracer that I I sell but I'm selling so many of them so like it all adds up it's still the same principle here not putting all my eggs into one basket and spreading it out as much as possible the more items I'm trying to sell at the same time the more gold I end up making overall now once again for the smoked bear meat I barely have any competition when I put it out so I'm just gonna put these out right now all of the stacks of them for 20 for two hours I do like using the two hour duration here because that way you avoid the deposit cost and usually in two hours you will get undercut anyway. So two hours there, posting all of those, we have the rock scale cod once again. This one goes at a vendor price for two silver, so I'm buying actually 1.8. So I'm buying them for 1.8 and selling them for 4.6 and I'm playing on Living Flame, the most popular EU server, or even the most popular server overall. I'm also doing disenchant flipping which I do have a video covering it's basically buying items so you're scanning items if you just go over here for example we can reset here and go to weapons I do like using weapons here and then go to level and down so go from level and down and just keep looking for cheap items using TSM you can get a disenchant value as well so you can compare this enchant value to the current auction house value in this case this one cost me 8 gold and disenchant value is 5.6 every now and then I do find items items here for 3 to 4 gold and they have a disenchant value of 5.6 so I'm making 1.6 to 2.6 gold basically for free just for scanning the auction house and then disenchanting those items this one for example almost profitable um yeah 2 gold disenchant value and 2.9 it really just depends because when an item rolls with bad stats People tend to put it on the auction house for a very cheap price, so disenchant shuffling is not a bad idea, and it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for. Now, the main way I'm making gold is basically waylaid supplies. Even phase 1 and phase 2, literally anything used in waylaid supplies, I keep proposing those on the auction house, and they keep selling like absolute hotcakes. The waylaid supply system is just absolutely fantastic, and people want reputation right it just makes sense people want to have the rep they want to get the runes at honored and right now there was even a blue post this week or i guess last week now talking about them adding brand new rewards to the faction so a lot of people are buying up right now and crafting these shipments and getting the rep in like preparation for those brand new items which we're guessing are going to be recipes for different professions being added to that uh, vendor in the next weekly reset here so once again, going back to the auction house, I'm also making soothing turtle bisque. This one I'm making a lot of profit with, but as you can see in the uh, market here, it's very volatile. You can see a bunch of them right now for under 5 silver each, and I've been selling them for an average of 11 silver. So in this case, you can see a massive jump from 5 silver all the way to 8. Uh, to 8 or 9 and then 11 so as you can see these are mine right here posted for 11 and then somebody undercut from 11 to 8 and then from 8 to 4 so what I'm what I'm simply going to do I'm gonna buy these all out 
Yeah, when it comes to the um, the waylaid supplies, they simply just go off the auction house way too fast. And in this case, somebody just undercut way too much, and it's literally free gold for me. So I'm just going to buy all of them right here for that price. I'm even going to buy the ones that are posted for 9 silver each. That way people can buy mine instead for 12 silver. So I'm doing the auction house a, um, I'm doing the auction house a service here giving us all more profit by buying all of them. So there we go, now mine are at the top, and they're all selling for 11.5 silver each. And once again, I've been selling 5,000 of these bad boys, sold 5,330 of them, and made absolute bank on that one item alone. 616 gold to be um, like to be precise, and I'm basically basically doubling my gold every single time on this one item. So I've made about 300 gold profit on one item alone, and it's just like once again, I send the turtle meat to a cooking cooking character, click craft all, go AFK. That's what I'm doing. Now, apart from that, which was basically a big segment of me talking about the waylaid supplies, I'm also making bank with alchemy. And when it comes to alchemy, I'm following a base principle that I've talked about in the past when it comes to classic WoW gold making. And it's something that I talked about in 2019 when Classic WoW came out. It's a gold making method that has worked for me in the past in retail, and it's been working wonders for me in Classic WoW, TBC and Wrath, and even Season of Discovery. It's literally the principle of buying materials for flasks when they're cheap, and they're usually cheap on the weekends when people have more time to play the game. They go out and farm more, they level more alts in the weekend. Basically just find a day when there's le when the materials are cheap, craft potions, craft elixirs, and sell those on raid reset day. For example, I literally made lesser arcane elixirs here, and I sold 617 of them for an average price of 83 silver. As you can see, shift clicking here, we sold, and we made 515 gold. All of this was sold in a span of two days. While I was raiding, so I just posted my auctions, did my raid, came back, and everything had sold. That means I made 250 gold per day. I also want to say it, that I made these for under 30 silver each. I sold them for 83. I made them for under 30. So I almost tripled my gold. I think I basically did triple my gold on these. So in that case, I turned about 150 gold into 515 gold in two days. Only by posting or posting auctions once or twice. So buy materials when they're cheap which tends to be either on weekends, or right now, like we're playing Season of Discovery, raids have a 3 day reset timer. What people do here usually, well what I do, is I buy materials on day number 3. Like if we have a cycle here, day number 1 is reset. So people raid on reset day, and the day after, the third day people tend not to raid, that's when I buy materials, and then it's a reset day again, so then you sell the flasks. So you sell flasks on day 1 and day 2, buy materials on day 3, craft stuff on day 3, and be ready to sell on reset day again. And just keep that cycle rolling. It's working absolute wonders, both when it comes to lesser arcane elixirs, and also elixirs of agility. If you want to take it one step further, even mana potions really works out here, and strength potions. I haven't really been dipping my toes too much into that market, but I have been making greater rage potions for warriors, and even that one is working wonders. So alchemy is a really good and kind of underrated profession to have. At least for me so far, it's been really simple. To make gold with. Either way, I think that's enough for today. It's been 18 minutes of me rambling and me talking about most of the ways that I'm making gold right now. It's mostly waylaid supplies and alchemy and just crafting. But before you start to craft, you do need to have some capital. So once again, go out and farm, do some quests at max level, just get some capital and find craftable items that have um, profit margins on your server, which mostly tends to be whaling supplies. Literally, go and check right now for Soothing Turtle Bisque and Smoked Bear Meat, and let me know the profit margins of those two in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like as well, and if you want to have more gold making info, check out the gold making guide through the links down below. Once again, I think it will be helpful to you, and um, yeah, I really would appreciate it. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Peace.